Good evening and welcome to the Premiership. Well, where amongst other things, we'll have highlights of the North London Derby. And we'll also have Newcastle Watford. And we'll also have Palace against Villa in a real absolute thriller down at Sellers Park. Plus, we'll have Goal of the Month competition where we've got nine of the best goals from the last from the first month of the season for you to choose from in our straw poll vault. In our straw, straw poll vault. And I'll give you instructions how to do that around that time. But first of all, we go to Turf Ball for our main feature. Liverpool taking their 100% record to the turf and putting it on the line against the Sean Dyche team who are back to winning ways after winning at Wolves last week. At the turf to find out whether they could keep that record going or would Burnley cause a shock was Johnny Tilsley. Liverpool take their 100% record, the last one left in the Premier League to to turf ball as they take on Burnley who are no doubt confident now after winning at Wolves last week they'll look to try and back it up with a big win against the title favourites and European champions remember they beat Liverpool here a few years ago with 20, less than 20% possession so they know what it takes this Burnley side to do it to do it on the day the two goal scorers that day Graham folks have moved on but it's the same, but it, they've kept the same back four as uh, last week with Gibson keeping his place in the heart of the defence instead of Ben Mee. And up front, it's Chris Wood and Ashley Barnes up front, as opposed to the previous strikers before. Liverpool, you know what you're going to get with them. They, had, they keep the same team that beat Arsenal last week and beat them. They could have ended up scoring two or three more. And Burnley really need to watch that front three. Salah, Firmino, and Mane. They can cause a real threat, as we all know. And here's a chance there. Morning. Oh, good save. Nick Pope had to save it at the near post. Four minutes played. And uh, Marty did really well. Got it onto the right foot. And Pope, with a couple, with Ada, a couple of deflections, did really well there to palm it out. It was a really good save. It's an anxious moment or two here at Turf Moor. Short to uh, Seller. It's Mo Seller. Oh, Marty's missed his kick. And Matip has lost it now. Here's Wood for Burnley. Chris Wood now. He's over the halfway line. Oh, he's put Derek Manil in, but the flag is up for offside. And maybe Chris Wood should have just gone alone. Oh, he had acres of space and should have run on Chris Wood. What a mistake. Here's Barnes away from Matip. Here's Manil. Oh, it's a beauty. It's an absolute screamer from Dwight McNeil and Burnley lane Liverpool. Here's the 100% record under threat here at Turf 4. Dwight McNeil with one of the goals of the season. Barnes turning provider. And Lane in McNeil who hit it crisply this time with the right foot. He had a sighting with the left foot not a few moments ago. He's now kissed it in off the post with his right foot. It's a terrific goal. And Jürgen Klopp's team are in trouble. With 25 minutes gone, Dwight McNeil with a scintillating goal. It's going to be up there in our ITV goal of the month competition. That is for sure and certain. It's Burnley 1, Liverpool 0. That's the real importance. Oh my word. And Robertson has picked up an injury as well. So an insult to entry for Liverpool. Here's Mane. Good football here by Mane. In towards Wijnaldum. And Tarkovsky trying to get it out. Still not away yet. Goodmanson to bring it away for Burnley. Half an hour of the game gone. Goodmanson's pass cut out. Now Wijnaldum. Fabinho. Henderson. Fabinho. Good football again from Liverpool. For Bobby Firmino on the far side. It's Mo Salah. And he's got Ronaldo waiting in the middle. Alexander Arnold. Alexander Arnold with a cross. It's a D1 towards the back post. Marnie was waiting. Dildo hooked away by Burnley. Westwood to bring it away now for the Clarets. He's got Cumberton. Oh, just showed too much of that to Andy Robertson. Looks like he's shaking off his knock. Good football and Mo Salah on the far side. Danger here for Burnley. It's Mo Salah with the cross. It towards Ronaldo. Oh, he's in the bar and it's cleared away by Burnley. Well, there's the chance again. Sellers cross and somehow Ronaldo has managed to hit the crossbar. Here's Marty. Last couple of minutes of the first half. It's Sadio Marty for Liverpool. Oh, 
Well, you've got to say that's a magnificent save by Nick Pope. It really is. Because Marnie has hit that with some ferocity. And Pope just had to turn it over. It may have been rising anyway, but Pope couldn't take that risk. And he made a good save out of it. In the end, it has to be said, as we go into the final knockings of the first half here at uh, Turf 4. Trent Alexander-Arnold with the corner. Short hit line there is rather towards Van Dyke. It's cleared away by Burnley. Westwood. Burnley should see this now to half time, surely, but they've not. And it's Gini Ronaldo in a lot of space. Marty and another save by Nick Pope. And cleared away by Charlie Taylor. Burnley are riding their luck. And keeping Liverpool at bay. It's not going to be easy in this second half. And here's Salah chipping it in there. Marty can't get up. He's not tall enough. And there goes the whistle. Liverpool have applied pressure on that Burnley defence, but they're not for budging. And Nick Pope has made three magnificent saves, but the goal, but really the big moment of that first half was that 25 yard brilliant right foot blockbuster from Dwight McNeil, which gives the Clarets the lead here and the champions 100% record under threat. Burnley won Liverpool now. Welcome back to the Premiership and to Turf Moor. It's Liverpool. We have made a substitution, get us underway at half time. Off comes Jordan Henderson and on comes Nabil Keita. And uh, Jurgen Klopp ringing some changes and the captain has had to pay the price. As Liverpool attack the goal to our right in the second half where all their fans are. This is Ronaldo from Salah's pass and it's a good block by, I think it was James Tarkovsky. Now McNeil is oh, just trying to caress that once too often there and he showed too much of that. Here's Keita getting his first touch. Into Ronaldo, into Bobby Firmino, Marnie with a shot well held by Nick Pope and Burnley trying to get on with it but they've lost possession. Here's Marnie, it's Sani and Marnie for Liverpool! Oh. And Burnley escape again. Liverpool coming close to equalising but Burnley not for moving. Robertson, Marnie's onside. Danger here for Burnley. Bobby Firmino's in there. Turned away by Cork. Can't find Wood though. Keita. Still Nabo Keita. Good effort. And a good save again by Nick Pope. Well they've kept Burnley in it here. Nick Pope a terrific save here. Brilliant goalkeeping there. And Burnley stay in the lead. Here's Salah. He's lost it again. Cork. That's good football here. Westwood is through here. And Wood trying to stay on Sarney and he's done just that remarkably well. It's Chris Wood for Burnley. Oh, it's a brilliant goal. It's a brilliant moment for Chris Wood. And what a way to get your first of the season. And Burnley go two goals clear. They lead Liverpool by two goals to nil. And the 100% record that Jürgen Klotzman have could be diminishing here at the turf today. Wood with a surefire shot. He got away from Virgil van Dijk and not many people get away from him. And then when he got through, one on one with the goalkeeper showed tremendous courage and it was an unerring finish beyond Allison in the goal. 69 minutes on the clock. It's 2-0 to Burnley. And what an afternoon for them. Goodman's it off. Jeff Everett comes on. He'll come on the right-hand side of midfield. Liverpool are being beaten 2-0. Chris Wood with the second one. Dwight McNeil got the first, obviously. It's been an amazing afternoon if you're a Burnley fan. Here's Mo Salah. Salah into the area. Good cross in there. It comes and it's hooked away once again. But only as far as Fabinho. Still Fabinho. Trying to beat all covers. Oh, and it's a good effort and it's over the top. Bobby Firmino, the latest one to try his luck and come up short in the end. It goes sailing over Nick Pope's bar. Oh, it's side netting. Side netting from Jeff Henrik. Well, that could have wrapped the game up for certain. Danny Drinkwater about to come off for the Clarets. As we come towards the end of the game, Westwood, the man sacrificed as we go to the final 10 minutes. Turf ball is an explosion of joy. 
Sean Dyche's men, after a sticky first couple of games, have really got their act together big time. They won very well at Wolves. And now they're winning, they're winning I mean, a, a tremendous evening against Liverpool of all teams. Here's Shakiri the substitute towards Mane's header and it's wide. Sadio Mane with the header. And in the end, Nick Pope had the, the goal covered every step of the way. It's been a great day for Burnley. Five minutes of the clash to play. And really, it has been a remarkable game of football. Burnley have really toiled. Liverpool have created chances, but just haven't taken them on the day. And sometimes you will get one of those games where it's just not going to go your way. Burnley, though, will celebrate if they can hold on here for three minutes or more. Here's Jakiri. Jakiri with a cross towards Trent Alexander Arnold, of all people. And it's hooked away. Barnes with a flick. Braithwick as well. Ward to McNeil. He's had a terrific game, this young lad. Come from the Burnley Academy. Here's Ashley Barnes. Ward. Here's Barnes. Oh, we didn't have any, enough pace to get away from. Virgil van Dijk that time. We're into stoppage time. Three minutes of it. We're almost at the end of it now. Liverpool playing through the motions. They know they've been the they've been second favourites on the day because the whistle has gone. A famous, famous victory for Sean Dyche and for Burnley. They shake hands, the two managers, but Sean Dyche has worked the Oracle again for the Clarets. They have knocked Liverpool off their Premier League perch. They had three wins out of three going into this one. Not anymore. They've been beaten for the first time this season. And the one remaining 100% record has now bit the dust. Burnley have the won it. And have won two on the bounce. What a result. Burnley 2, Liverpool 0. What a shocker. So Jurgen Klopp becomes a cropper at Turf Moor. And the last remaining 100% record goes. Liverpool beaten 2-0 by a very good Burnley side. We are coming back under form after a couple of dodgy results to start the season under Sean Dyche. Next we go to the Emirates Stadium where Arsenal look to bounce back from defeat against Liverpool last week and a lucky escape in the cup against Walsall at the Best Scott Stadium on Wednesday. They took on a Spurs side whose season after a slow start is starting to get pace. They beat Newcastle 2-0 last time out. And watching for us on what was an, an absolute fiery North London derby was Jay Matterface. <laughs> Welcome to the Emirates Stadium, where it's the North London Derby, the first one of the season, and Tottenham Hotspur take themselves to Arsenal, who look to bounce back from defeat at Liverpool, and they had a, a very tough uh, game against Walsall, which they got through on penalties. It's the same back four and, and the same back five, Guendouzi and Xhaka in the midfield. Cabellos just scored a cracking goal at the best cop that night. Goes up front, it goes in behind the main striker, which is like that Aubameyang starts on the left. Well, it's all handshakes and smiles now, but when the battle commences, Spurs will want to try and beat their own North London rivals. And really, their back four is the usual mix Walker Peters, Aldebaro, Fatongan, and Rolls. Winks and Undenberry get their chance in the midfield alongside Lem. Son and Lamella and Eriksson and Harry Kane who scores in the of the derbies for fun is up front and this really is a tough game a top match for a top game and it should be an absolute crackerjack looking forward to this one so it's Arsenal in red and white to get us underway so, so need I remind you are in all white off we go Big game this for both sides, there's no doubt about that as uh, Spurs come forward here with Son. And here's a chance, oh and over the top. It was Sung Young Min in the opening exchanges, a lovely play, bit of play here and he gets the shot off and just goes over the top. It was a really good chance for Mauricio Pochettino's side, but just couldn't take the chance. Three minutes gone of the first half. And already Arsenal starting on the front foot. This is Leno with the kick for Arsenal. 0-0 is the score. Aubameyang going in very strong. 
Lamella's there too. Picks the ball up. Good football again this time from Tottenham. The sun is out in full but glare this afternoon. Walker Peters. Lamella. And Lamella did so well, but he's lost possession this time. Obama Yang. Lacazette. Still Lacazette. He does really well here. Still Alexander Lacazette. He's got support. Lacazette. Good chance here. Cabellos. Oh, he's lost possession. And Vertonghen just held in there very strongly indeed. Big chance there. Gone begging for Arsenal. Oh, good play. Walker Peters in behind. Quarter of an hour gone. Big chance for Spurs. It's Walker Peters. Pulls the trigger, but pulls it wide. Real good opportunity again this time at Tottenham of Fashion. Walker Peters this time. I just needed better accuracy on the finishing, and that might have been there for them. Rose with the tackle, and then he goes in hard there, and that could be a book in. A little bit cynical there from Danny Rose, but he's not going to get a book in. And Gwen Doozy wants to know why. I have to say that did look a foul on Gwen Doozy. It's his from behind. He trips him up, and uh, I can't believe the referee's not uh, even booked him for that. But there you go. Sometimes in football, you don't get what you deserve, and uh, Danny Rose certainly got away with one there. Here's Granite Xhaka, the Arsenal skipper. In towards Gwen Doozy. Lacazette. Aubameyang is an outlet on the left hand side. Three Arsenal players in the middle, but Aubameyang goes for goal and scores a butte. And there goes the trademark somersault to boot as well, but it's Arsenal more important than that who take the lead in this big, big North London derby. Gets it out on the left, swivels, turns. And gets enough room to bend it past Hugo Lloris and into the back of the net. It's a magnificent finish. Look at the way how it arrows into the net. Top right hand corner. And that is a pearl of a finish. Porchettino frustrated but Aubameyang obviously delighted. And a goal that was badly needed in more ways than one. Arsenal 1, Tottenham Hotspur 0. What a modern moment that was for Pierre Emerick Aubameyang. And Arsenal now have a lead to protect. Here's Pepe. Into stoppage time at the end of the uh, first half. And Pepe still going. Still a good run by Nicola Pepe. And a good ball in two. And a good fist away by Hugo Lloris. And there goes the half time interval whistle. Well, it's been a competitive, combative 45 minutes. Certainly here at the Emirates this afternoon so far. But well, that goal from Pierre Emerick Obama Young, a real extra set missile into the top right hand corner, has given Arsenal a half time lead here in the North London Derby. It's Arsenal 1, Tottenham Hotspur 0 at half time. Three minutes into the second half, and here comes Harry Kane for Tottenham. Still Kane. Numdumbelli, good football, but this time, oh, and Leno almost got his team in trouble. In fact, he has done. It's Harry Kane, there's the shot deflected. And behind for a corner. And now it's going to be Ericsson to take. Goes short to Harry Winks. Winks' is ball in. It's a good one, but it's straight at Leno. You could say that was half a chance, although some may argue it was a genuine chance. But there you go, that's just the way it happens with Spurs. Here's Obama Young now, the goal scorer. Good football again. Pierre Eric Obama Young. Real opportunity now for Arsenal. Pull back towards Guendouzi and that was a poor ball really. That's the lot of Guendouzi. He tried to dummy at the Arsenal man. And in the end now Spurs have got the break on here with Eriksen. Lamella. Eriksen continues his run. And now Kane in a bit of space. Eriksen is still there. This is Christian Eriksen but he's offside. Really, really poor end to what was a promising attack there for Spurs. Cabellos to Pepe. Aubameyang, oh, lovely turn, lovely swim, a good shot and a good save. It's a really good piece of goalkeeping, but I think the flag was off anyway as Undombele comes off and Musa Sizoko takes his place. So with about 13 minutes to go, 
Matteo Grandosi comes off. And Lucas Torreira replaces him now for Arsenal. Both teams have made an alteration. But it still remains 1 0 to the Arsenal. It's a draw and that reminisces with Arsenal fans from the passes. Cabello strikes one and a good save. Well, the Tottenham captain Hugo Lloris has kept his side in it. Cabellos has scored a cracker against Walsall in the League Cup during the week. Almost repeated the dose there, but for a fine save by Hugo Lloris. Here's Wiggs. Chip forward towards Kyle Walker Peters, but now Wiggs will get a second goal. Wiggs, Walker Peters. Two in the area if Walker Peters can get his head up. The ball back in across the face. Good save again. And Ericsson off the post. And it's in by Tizoko for the equaliser. The substitute is equal after Ericsson and had two bites of the cherry. One tipped on the crossbar by Bern Leno. Here it is. Leno, good save. And then Walker. And then the shot off the post again from Ericsson. And then Suzuko firing it into the roof of the net. And Spurs have got the equaliser. Boy, did they leave it late though. Right on the last knock-ins, they might have just pinched a priceless, priceless point. And as things stand now, the bragging rights could be shared. And Arsenal really have only themselves to blame for that. 1-1. What a scintillating North London derby this has been. And there goes the full-time whistle uh, to end the game. So that equaliser was virtually the last kick of what was a really good competitive North London derby also took the lead and led for a goal from Pierre Emerick of Birmingham which was a goal of real genius and then Spurs knocked on the door and in, in the last 15 minutes they got their reward in the last second Ericsson had one saved onto the bar then hit the post and then Suzoko followed up to equalise and honours are even to the disgruntlement of some Arsenal fans anyway it's finished here in the North London derby Arsenal won Tottenham Hotspur won well, a great result there for Tottenham. Arsenal will feel very unfortunate. But having said that, they had chances to put the game beyond Tottenham before Tottenham really came into it in the last 15 minutes and got there just as it was with an equaliser. So, honours evening in North London derby. Now we stay in London. In fact, we moved down to South East London for what actually turned out to be a very, very good game of football between Crystal Palace and Aston Villa. And watching for us on, again, another dramatic game uh, and another dramatic game was John Drury. Well, two teams that are doing okay in the Premier League. Aston Villa, who have succeeded all expectations. And Crystal Palace really need to start winning a few games. But they're, but they're a very good proposition at Selhurst Park, usually. And Roy Hodgson, they've got a very good manager. Dale and Sacco still to really fill in. The, the big threat will be Wilfried Sahar on the right-hand side of midfield. He'll cause the problems. And Ayer gets the nod up front. That's for Aston Villa, who have been really, really comfortable in this league. They had a bit of a blip last time out against Everton. But will look to bounce back in the grand manner. It's absolutely certain there. A good side. Kept in superbly well. Certainly over the last 18 months by Jack Grealish. John McGinn is one they'll have to watch. He scored a fantastic goal against Bournemouth the other week and Wesley is a super striker as well Thank you, here's Ward Saha Saha from Ward's pass towards Schwab couldn't get it out MacArthur they're on the back foot Schwab hits the side netting this was the chance again there was the effort and as I say just wide of the target Saha did well to shake up his man oh and a chance for Kiate and it was well saved from Heaton he had to do everything right now the ball forward oh Grealish has got it hard and, and that could be trouble for the Villa skipper he'll do well to escape with a yellow card here but it's red for the Villa captain and Villa are down to 10 men Drek Grealish Jack Grealish goes. It's Miller. Vo it's in fact, it's Ward, the man who f he fouls, and it is very, very late. The board well gone, 
And uh, Jack Grealish has been rightly sent off by the referee. And now Milivojevic to take the three kick. And Palace will be... That's a poor three kick by Milivojevic standards. Palace will be a little bit buoyed by that. But Villa are a team that can still play even with ten men. And look at the space afforded Wesley. The Palace defence are nowhere. And the ball played across. It's El Ghazi. 1-0 Villa. So simple in its construction. And the Palace defence absolutely went to sleep. They were nowhere. They parted. And the ten men of Aston Villa have responded in the best possible fashion. And have taken the lead. What a moment that is. 22 gone. El Ghazi with the goal for Villa. Villa have a lead. Just a sort of tonic that one needed really. And now it's up to Crystal Palace to respond. Saha. Kiwati. Saha again. Plenty of opportunity to make things happen. He's making things happen. It's Wilfred Saha across the face and the header over. Better from Roy Hodgson's side. Saha making it happen. And the header in the end was just too high. Otherwise, Milivojevic would have headed Palace level. Here's Ayu. And Sharp. It's Jeffrey Sharp. He scores. Palace level. Jeff Sharp. The title winner in his days at Leicester. Has scored a crucial goal for Palace. And the men. The 10 men of Villa could not hold out. That's a cool finish by Jeffrey Sharp. Beyond Tom Eaton's dive and into the back of the net. It's a marvellous finish. Roy Hudson salutes it with royal delight. Five minutes to go to the break. Jeffrey Schlapp has equalised for Crystal Palace. One each. And a real setback for Aston Villa who really got to grits with the game despite the fact that they'd gone down to 10 men after that ridiculous sending off of Jack Grealish where well, he should have ought to know better the Villa captain but now it's Palace in the ascendancy and it's Milivojevic through Milivojevic are you are you hit it wide of the target Better though from Palace, really making in rows and finding a goalkeeper or firing it wider, the goalkeeper on the post. We're right at the end of stoppage time and El is in the clear. El Ghazi for Villa, 2-1. The 10 men lead again. And Palace again was split defensively. The offside shot didn't work. And Villa cash in again. Gaeta could have saved it there, possibly. And despondency for Roy Hodgson and the Palace fans in the background. Delight for Aston Villa in there. Two and a half thousand who have travelled down from the Midlands. This is a remarkable turn of events. Palace 1, Villa 2, right on the stroke of half time. And that is half time. And what a turnabout. The 10 men of Aston Villa being applauded off by their supporters. They lost a man through Jack Grealish, but two goals from Old Garzi. Sandwiched in between that, a just swept equaliser. But at half time, it's the 10 men who lead. Into the second half. Kiati. Milivojevic. Kiati. Blocked away. It might have hit the post, I'm not sure, but here's Wesley. Certainly the ball bounced away. And here's Wilf Saha. Take it on all comers. Still Wilf with Saha. Digs out across. Are you? Well, they're making chances in the second half, Palace, to try and restore some parity. But that's a good piece of defending, in fact. As Roy Hudson now makes changes. Here's Begin. 
Wesley. John McGinn. Wesley continues his run. It's Wesley now for Villa. It's 3 1 to the 10 men. Wesley gets his name on the score sheet. And the 10 men go two goals clear. Right across Kieta and into the far corner. And what a remarkable turnaround this has been. A remarkable afternoon here down at Selhurst. It's Palace 1, Villa 3. And Wesley with the goal. You cannot pause for breath. This has been a remarkable afternoon here. Crystal Palace 1. Aston Villa 3. Here's Milivojevic for Palace. Saha. Now then. They've got a numerical advantage. But they trail by 2. Van Heinel going in. And off the line. And Villa getting away. The 10 men hanging on gamely. Here's Begin. It's John Begin. Trezeguet going up. Now Will Saha. Jordan Ayew. Four minutes left. It's been a day to forget for Crystal Palace in one way, more ways than one. Their supporters will not be happy losing to a team with all due respect that have been reduced to 10 men and nearly promoted as well at home. They expect better than that. Camarasa. Kuate. Milivojevic. Now El Ghazi for Villa. He's going to be the two goal hero today. Townsend the substitute. Ayu is onside. In fact, he's offside. We need to three added minutes of stoppage time. And Bernardo comes off and Martin Kelly comes on. But what difference is it going to make really in the grand scheme of things? Quite frankly, not much really. And that's uh, what you call football. McGinn loses possession, but Villa have won the game. More ultimately than that, the 10 men who have played well over 75 minutes with 10 men. They've won it by three goals to one. They had Grealish sent off, but two goals from Mokazi. And then Wesley sealing the deal. Shrupp, he did equalise for Palace and brought it to 1 1. But Villa took command, and the 10 men played like they were the team with 11 men. And Palace played like the team with 10 and played so woefully, despite having a numerical advantage for 70 minutes. But what a result for Villa, away from home with 10 men. They've won by three goals to one. Well, another good win there for Aston Villa. They lost Jack Grealish, of course, but they galvanised themselves and won handsomely against the Crystal Palace side, who will be kicking themselves at the moment. Roy Hodgson really needs to get a grip on there, otherwise it could be... A long, hard season for Crystal Palace. That's for Villa. They're going very well in the well and truly in the top five or six in the Premier League. Our final feature match comes from St James's Park, where we take our first proper look at Newcastle United, uh, yet to win at this before today under Steve Bruce. Took on a Watford side who'd won very handsomely against Brighton on the opening day, but has struggled for form since, including a 4-1 away loss to um, Everton. Commentating on the game at St James's Park was Johnny Brackley. Well, Newcastle struggling for form, but uh, could get off to a winning start here if they could beat Watford. They haven't won this season, but they have a good side, led by their skipper, Jamal Lasalles. Almiron, Shelby and Atsu will need to have good games. And Joe Linton, then, record signing, has really yet to hit the ground running. As for Watford, who won well at uh, Homes of Brighton, of course, on helping day, but have struggled a little bit since. Can Kike Sanchez Suarez kickstart their campaign with another victory? Well, they hope so, with Hughes covering Delafeo, a good three man midfield, and Andre Gray up front. No place again for Troy Deeney, but Danny Welbeck is amongst the substitutes. Good atmosphere around St. James's Park as he always is on occasions like this. Shelby. It's John Joe Shelby. Shelby! Good save. It's a brilliant save by the goalkeeper. Oli Bass. Capu. Delafeo. Gray. Andre Gray. He's in behind the Newcastle defence. It's Andre Gray. And it's a team hit. And it's an easy save at the near post. 
for Marty Debrutka. And a good ball forward and oh there's a slip here and Delafeo's onto it and he's missed it. Big chance. Delafeo knows he should have scored. One for quarter, right at the last knockings. Debrutka with a punch away. Now then, cleverly. Tom Cleverly, Delafeo, good football again by Watford. Delafeo deflected. And in fact, the referee is bloated for half time. So, really a disappointing first half as far as Watford is concerned. But Newcastle still very much in the game, thanks to some good saves by Martin Debrotka, who really does look the goods at the moment. Half time, it's Newcastle nil, Watford nil, let's hope for better in the second half. At two. Joe Linton and, Al and Almiron is onside it's Almiron still Almiron and a goal for Joe Linton and now Newcastle can celebrate 52,000 fanatical Geordie supporters go absolutely mad and Watford Paying the price for all those missed opportunities they had in their grasp. And Joe Linton with a good finish. Almiron laying him in. And look at that. Six yards out. It's a simple tap in. And that's all he needed. He's happy enough. Great performance there. And Newcastle punished the mistakes that Watford have made. And Joe Linton will be delighted about that. 1-0. And just when it needed most. Dakori. And that's a, a nice ball now. And, and Gray now can take possession. And Cleverley's onside. It's Tom Cleverley now. Oh, he's missed it. Now well, that just sums up Watford's afternoon in a nutshell. Tom Cleverley, forward he went. And he beats Marlene de Brocker okay. But he's hit it over the bar. 72 minutes gone here at St James's Park. And we just seen Cleverly hit the ball into the Gallagher end as Welbeck now comes on for Watford. Capu. De La Feo. De Corey. Not a good ball and it's cut out. And now Atsu on the break now for Newcastle. As they look to seal the deal. Atsu, he knew that... Uh, a firm of Newcastle, an advanced player for Newcastle was onside, offside. So he had to delay it. Still at two. Good cross. Salmaron is there, but so too is Boster. Did really well there, the, new, the uh, Watford goalkeeper. Still Watford on the attack with Capu. Still Capu. Good skills. Cleverly. Still Tom Cleverly. Now Danny Welbeck. Gets his shot off from wide. Stoppage time at the end of the game. Here's success. The substitute across towards Pereira. Good save again by Marlin de Bracca. Well, he certainly earned his call today, uh, the Newcastle goalkeeper. He did really well there near post. Don't think it was going in inside it, but de Bracca could not take a risk or two here. Good piece of goalkeeping. And Newcastle almost there now for victory. But Holabas to take the Watford corner. Seconds remaining. Can Watford steal a point, maybe? Success. Tries to shot early to the Gargit end. And there goes the full-time whistle. Well, it was tough. It was tedious. It was tedious at times. It was an adventure Newcastle display. Watford had the lion's share of the chances in the possession, but they just didn't take their chances. And that goal from Joe Linton... Has won Newcastle a precious three points and lifts the pressure a little bit off Steve Bruce. Very nice to get your first time win of the season. And that will make a lot of people in this part of the world feel a whole lot happy about things. It's finished here up at St James's Park. Newcastle won. What for nil? Well, that result for Newcastle moves them level on points with Watford. Moves them onto four points and more significantly for Steve Bruce's men out of the bottom three. Now, before our round... Before our roundup with Johnny Newborn, let's take a look at our Go of the Month competition for August. Now, what's going to happen is this. I'll explain how you'd vote later, but first of all, 
for the next six minutes. Enjoy nine, uh, the best nine goals seen on ITV's coverage of football during August. And then you've got to select your favourite in a straw poll vote, which I'll explain to you after you've seen all nine goals. Here are the nine goals now, set to some music. Enjoy and watch and watch the, all the goals, and I'll explain how to vote after you've seen all nine goals. <laughs>
Well, I hope you enjoyed all those nine strikes and great strikes they were too. Now, all you need to do is uh, to vote for your favourite goal is simple. Um, basically, you go to www.strollpole.com. I'll leave a link in the description below. And all you've got to do is vote for your favourite. Okay, your favourite goal. And we'll be announcing the result. You've got about three days from the programme entering YouTube going live on YouTube to vote and the people and the and the goal that wins the vote will win gold the month for August and the and I'll tell you and I'll announce the result during our live Champions League program in during the next week. So that will be the result. So during half time of our Champions League live match um, which we don't know what it will be yet we will announce the winner then. Uh, so go to straw poll, click on your favourite, and whoever wins, whoever whoever gets the most votes will win. So go to straw poll, and we'll do sort that out for you. Right, let's get a roundup now uh, of all the other six games, including some real, including a real four-star performance from Manchester City as they took on Brighton. And with the roundup of all the action, it's Johnny Newbon. Welcome to the Etihad Stadium. Will you please make some noise as we welcome Brighton and Hull Albion. Brighton had won their last two and looked in scintillating form, but Manchester City, under the guidance of Pep Guardiola, are just too good a team to mess up. And David Silva really showed the way to go with the first one. And then Sergio Aguero involved in the second one. Again, David Silva in the middle, getting in there, comes off Matt Ryan, the goalkeeper, but it goes in the back of the net. And David Silva. Evergreen is ever the two originals that were bought when the Arabs took over, when the Sheikhs took over all those years ago. Still bearing fruit at their ripe old ages. And then Aguero himself got himself onto the score sheet with goal number three. It was a terrific finish. One you come to expect really from Sergio Aguero. And it was a cool finish as again you see on the replay it's just worth the look at again on the replay City winning the ball back so casually and Aguero thank you very much good night nurse and then a fourth one just to round it off City were playing some foot, majestic football out of this world and they certainly did again Matt Ryan beaten again and Manchester City are really much very much on the charge and Bernardo Silva getting the fourth Well, Manchester United, the uh, City's Labours were up against Southampton who have really not done as well as they would have liked, but what a good... But as for United, they bounced back in the best possible way after that shock exit in the League Cup in, the, in midweek against Cambridge. And one matter, two goals in two games to him, and that one was a real finish of instinct. United are looking good in every department in the Premier League at least. And they certainly look the goods. There's Marcus Rashford. That's a goal that you come to expect from Marcus now. He's scoring a plenty. And then it was three soon afterwards. Look at the space Pereira's got here. And the ball played back across. And there was the chip in for number three. And then it was four soon after. Oh, as Rashford came in. Got it at the second attempt on the rebound. And the job was done as far as Manchester United are concerned. They were always going to get the three points. Southampton weren't too really in it for spells. But they showed a little bit of fight. And, and when Che Adams got through. And he found an opportunity. He beat Stabby De Gea. But it was no more than a consolation. Manchester United were just far too good on the day. Adams enjoyed his moment in the sun though. That'll do his confidence a world of good. But Southampton well beaten. Manchester United were the winners by four goals to one. Well, this should have been an easy three points and an easy, uh, an easy result on the coupons. But Bournemouth did some coupon busting. Josh King needed two goals to put them ahead against Leicester. But it was still going to be a long, hard struggle 
against a good Leicester City side but Josh King proving his worth again boldly going in there and sticking it in the net in the second half Leicester battled to get an equaliser and what they were going to do here a long run ended with a deflection away and not even the brilliant Jamie Vardy or James Madison could stop them falling to defeat disappointment for Leicester delight though for Bournemouth Sheffield United for large periods give this one a real goal. Oli McBurney coming closest in the first half. Effort just went over Kepa's crossbar. And then they had another chance. And again, Kepa put one out the air. In the second half, though, Chelsea responded. William hit it a dummy three kick against the crossbar. And the rebound was headed wide. But then, as we come towards the end of the game, the ball was spread out. And here's Williams with the cross. And Pedro from snowboard of four yards out, tucking the ball into the back of the net. And it broke a few hearts in Sheffield, I can tell you. Relief, though, for the Messers who cheer on Chelsea every week at Stamford Bridge. But Frank Lampard's men, after a couple of dodgy results, back in the groove again. And maybe back in the hunt, maybe, for the title. It's a good young side at Frank Lampard's building to uh, ch Chelsea. Sheffield United, well, they'll be very unfortunate to come away with nothing from this game. But Chris Wilder's got a good battle inside there and they'll pick up points elsewhere during the season. Please welcome to the pitch, Norwich City. Well, here come two teams now that could do with big points. West Ham have struggled, but Norwich are doing all right. And Aaron's put the Canaries in front. Our best possible way to respond after a, a disappointing cup defeat in midweek to Liverpool. Needed two bites of the cherry, mind you, uh, Aaron's, and uh, he did really well. And the Trevor and Canaries fought they were on for a, a priceless away win here. Breaks the offside trap, goalkeeper makes a good save, but can't stop the rebound from going into the back of the net. But then West Ham hit back, and they did really well. And as the ball comes in, a good equaliser there to make it 1-1. Important goal that for West Ham because it gives them a, a steady progress. Mark Noble, the captain, with a simple finish. And it was an honours even then at the London Stadium. One apiece, a good point for West Ham. But uh, you know, for Norwich, real disappointment that Daniel Farker's man really couldn't hold on. And finally, Everton against Wolves. No goals in this one, but there was plenty of great action there. It was a good save from Rui Patricio. Then Everton went close again. This time Richarlison finding the Wolves goalkeeper in spectacular form. In the second half, Sigurdsson this time trying his luck. But again, again a good piece of goalkeeping. And it was the Rui Patricio show. But uh, this was probably the best save of the series he made in this match. Look at that ball dipping towards goal, curling towards goal. He was on target and he made a good save. Wolves, though, weren't without chances themselves. They could have so easily nicked the game in the end. Mistake there by the defender. And the ball was put wide. And uh, Diego Jota, the man guilty there. But another great opportunity once again. Calvert-Lewin this time, the man denied this time. And then Wolves could have pinched it at the end here. There was the effort over the top. It was Dendonka with the shot. And in the end, it's ended goalless, but not a bad game nonetheless. Johnny Newborn there reporting. So let's have a look at the league table then as things stand after after everyone's played four games. Manchester United now top on goal difference. They put their cup defeat against uh, Cambridge on Wednesday. One truly behind them. And Marcus Rashford still in amongst the goal scorers. They've now scored 10 goals in their first four games. A really remarkable start. Liverpool losing their 100% home record with a defeat, or 100% record even, with defeat, a deserved defeat against Burnley. Uh, Bournemouth up to third now after uh, three wins and a draw. That's an impressive start for them. Everton in fourth. Man City down in fifth. Villa in sixth. Chelsea, Arsenal and Chelsea seventh and eighth respectively. Then comes Spurs in ninth place. Burnley completing the top ten there. And then come Brighton, Norwich, Watford, Newcastle. Um, big moment for them, actually, just, uh, earlier, earlier on in the programme. Leicester City, 
Southampton, Sheffield United out of the bottom three and the bottom three at the moment. Wolves, West Ham and Crystal Palace. And the teams yet to win are Sheffield United, Leicester City, West Ham and Crystal Palace. And that completes the league table after week four of the Premier League. Well, that's it for us for another week on the Premiership. Don't forget, we've got uh, Champions League coverage returning in the next week. Plus, for the first time ever on ITV, we're going to be showing you England against Australia in the Ashes. And, of course, we'll have some Champions of Champions of Snooker to come as well. But Liverpool become a cropper and lose their 100% record. They were done by a Kiwi called Wood. And he knocked on Liverpool's door, bolted through it, and bang went their 100% record. And as for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, he's back behind the wheel. And the wheels are turning towards the top of the Premier League. For me, take care. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>